So this was a game that I've known about for quite a while. A game where you've got a mixed bag of different things put together, solid third person gunplay, a world that's kind of a mix between Fallout, Destiny and Dark Souls, and also a randomization factor put into it. Remnant from the Ashes was something that piqued my interest back when it first released, but I never gave myself the opportunity to play it at the time, even when I was already playing the crap out of the Souls games. But seeing the generally positive reception of the second game, it eventually made me install the first one since I had managed to get a copy for free, from the Epic Game Store during their free game releases. The Souls franchise has changed so much of the action RPG landscape that not only did it spawn a genre of its own, but future titles from other genres would take a page from Miyazaki's book on how to create an interesting world filled with punishing but fair enemies, where you continuously die until you figure out the best strat to take them down. Remnant from the Ashes is a game that also does this but with guns and is one of the many Souls inspired games that we have today. When I first started playing it I had discovered two things. One, that there was a prior game from the Ashes that was loosely connected, called Kronos Before the Ashes which was a lot more Souls-like due to its emphasis on melee-focused combat, whereas in Remnant from the Ashes, ranged weapons are more of a priority here. The game has its fair share of challenge in the same way as the Souls games, where some classic rage moments would come here and there, leading to a number of frustrating deaths and boss fights. So, knowing that I was in for a challenging ride, I got out my Estus Flask and started spamming the dodge roll to make it more like Souls, for a Souls-like experience. Anyway, the game starts off with you creating a character, and then you get told to reach a tower, you take your shitty sword and go on a quest, only for a massive wave to wash you away, you wake up with buildings everywhere, and tree-like enemies that are running amok. You try to save one bloke, and then you get overwhelmed, only to wake up in a ward. And from there, you begin meeting some of the other characters. You get given a gun, and you get missions that lead you to a year eventual goal, which is to stop the root which is a race from another dimension that had invaded Earth and gave humanity the Skynet treatment, but with tree-like monsters and otherworldly magic. Now you've got a post-apocalyptic late 60s setting that's not too far off from Fallout, where you can use computer terminals that are pretty similar to the ones in those games. Your main goal here is to reach the tower in order to stop the route, but you also have the goal of finding Founder Ford, who has gone missing and may be the key to putting an end to it all. The game starts rolling once you leave Ward 13, which is essentially this game's Firelink Shrine, where you can talk to NPCs and get upgrades for your Dragon Hearts, as well as your weapons and armor. Starting off with Earth, you have decent sized hubs that you can explore, find loot and kill enemies in. One of the pathways will eventually lead you to where you need to go, but there are also dungeons, optional ones mind you, that you can explore. You can fight optional bosses or have unique encounters with NPCs that you may get a chance to meet. And chance is a pretty important word here because it's something that will significantly affect your playthrough. Eventually you'll reach a place called the Labyrinth and that's when you discover that there are other realms that have been affected by the route. There's three other main spots that you go to where you encounter NPCs, you fight bosses, as well as the world bosses in places like Eastern Wind, Corsus, and Yasha. They each have their own atmosphere and variety of enemies and bosses, if you want to farm specific enemies though, you'll have to then go to the location where they often spawn. As for the type of weapons available, you have a mix of rifles, pistols, melee weapons, shotguns, submachine guns, and boss weapons. The main source of income is scrap which you can use to buy items or new gear. You also have different crafting materials to upgrade which you can find in the game's world. A lot of the weapons in this game are pretty viable. Some like the beam rifle and the crossbow require a steady crosshair but with the right builds you can do a decent chunk of damage. And some builds, especially if you go for a crit based build, can melt bosses in minutes, or even seconds actually. You also have two ring slots and an amulet slot that give off different effects, making for different builds, as well as the traits for your character and the mods that you obtain. The three classes don't have much of a difference between each other. You have Hunter, Ex-Cultist, and Scrapper. But for a first time playthrough, I would recommend the Ex-Cultist class. It has an easier starting point thanks to the Spirit trait, not to mention that you can get the Elder Knowledge trait early on within Ward 13. I'll provide a helpful video that has some good starting tips for first time players in the description. Enemies themselves have a somewhat limited range of attacks that get easier to predict over time. It's just that when you're fighting bosses and you have fodder to clear, it can get overwhelming sometimes. Almost every boss in this game has other minions looking to have a go at you while you're trying to DPS the boss, which has led to some frustrating deaths, I'll admit. But if you've ever played any of the Souls games, or Souls likes, and you see that this game is Souls inspired, then it's just something that comes with the territory. I found myself really enjoying the combat. A lot of the bosses had some great arenas and boss designs, coupled with the interesting setting where it's kind of like a mix of Fallout and Destiny, and also Souls with the combat. If you factor in the 60s and 70s based Earth, 
and the otherworldly realms with magical properties. It made for an overall fun experience, coupled with the great setting and the combat. Graphically, the game is okay. It's nothing too special, but the locational variety and the range of enemies and bosses do make up for it. Some of the gear and the weapons have some really neat designs, characters though, not so much. But it is a game with a smaller budget, so you do have to take that into consideration. Games don't necessarily have to be super polished in terms of graphics, but they should have a good art style to make up for it. Just look at Breath of the Wild and Team Fortress 2. They have distinct and unique art styles that have essentially made them timeless, whereas photorealistic games in the past don't look so realistic anymore. On a technical level, it could be better, sure, but the game does have some solid set pieces and environments to explore. It's just too bad that the story itself is not really that interesting. If you're going into this game, it's going to be mainly for the combat, as well as the co-op that you can do as well. I've had a few sessions, but most of the time they would just end up leaving or it would just lead to a bad result. You can set the game to offline if you prefer to play on your own. In fact, I would recommend avoiding co-op for now unless you have a crew of people at the same starting level because scaling comes into play here and if a random player joins your team and their level is even higher than yours, then the session will be scaled to their level which will make things even harder for you. Either that or just play solo and then do co-op in another run. Speaking of runs and playthroughs as well as chances, Remnant's structure revolves around randomization. This means that every playthrough will be different from each other. You will have different encounters with NPCs or different boss fights even, not to mention access to gear and weapons. If there was a particular weapon you wanted and it's not in your run, then too bad, you have to re-roll the campaign and try again. I'm not really a fan of this system to be honest, I would have rather had, had it where you could get everything in the first run and then have a randomizing option for the next playthrough or a new one where you just want to try a different build, so I have a randomizer mode as an optional feature, rather than have it drilled into the main core game. To get the full experience of this game, you have to have a bit of luck, and must be willing to spend time re-rolling campaign runs, just so that you can experience everything that this game has to offer. However, there is the adventure mode, which is a smaller length version of the game, and gives you chances to find new stuff, and fight other bosses that you missed out on, and it also doesn't affect your save. So there is that at least. Remnant from the Ashes is a pretty solid Souls-like game that shows you that you can have something similar to it but have guns instead of just melee weapons. It has a cool setting with some good boss fights, great weapon variety and engaging combat. But I'm not really sure if it's a game that I'll keep replaying. I was pretty much done with it when I had beaten the final boss. Moving forward, I'll eventually look into getting the second game since I've heard that one is so much better. But what you do get here is some really solid content, plus the DLC that adds more into the mix. Like I'd already said, I'm not a huge fan of the whole randomized structure of the game. The story could have been developed better. I didn't find myself interested in any of the characters or their stories. The lore itself, however, of the setting is pretty interesting if you read more into it, so there is something in that department to look out for. But yeah, if you're looking for a Souls-like game that doesn't just have a sword, then Remnant from the Ashes is definitely worth picking up. Thank you for watching. Good.